Hello there. My name is Łukasz Stutka and I'm from University of Warsaw. In this ELSA project video, I will introduce the subject of live subtitling in live events and education. When you think of live subtitling, you might be thinking only about subtitles on television. You might have learned a lot about live subtitling on TV in the previous module of the ELSA course. However, live subtitling is also used in other settings such as live events and education. We have prepared this presentation together with my colleague Monika. Monika Szczygielska is media accessibility expert and trainer, a provider of accessibility services, including live subtitling and sign language interpreting. My background is in audiovisual translation, especially subtitling and live subtitling. I'm a lecturer at the University of Warsaw, where I train interpreters, subtitlers and re-speakers. Together, we provide live subtitling for TV and live events at Dostępni.eu, an accessibility services provider in Poland. Dostępni means accessible in Polish. In this lecture, we will share examples from our professional practice. Let us start by defining what do we mean by an accessible event? Specifically, we will be talking about live events, such as conferences or concerts. An accessible event is an event without barriers. These barriers can be physical, digital, or these might be barriers in communication. Everybody can participate in a barrier-free, accessible event. Thus, we can have many different users of subtitles. For example, the deaf, the hard of hearing, or the deaf blind, but also people with attention deficits. The users may also include speakers of a foreign language, or conversely, those who are not fluent in a foreign tongue. That is why we have to acquaint ourselves with the needs of these different groups. All these groups may use subtitles in specific contexts. In fact, all of us might find ourselves in contexts where we will need live subtitles as an aid in communication. So everybody can be a user of live subtitling. The events may also differ. One of the first questions we need to answer is, do we have to provide live subtitles to every single event? In this module, we offer a case study video that will help you answer this question. The deaf and the hard of hearing find it difficult to imagine an accessible conference, lecture or meeting without subtitles. Live subtitles are usually provided for conferences. During one of the conferences we've been working at, we've asked the users what is important for them. One of them, Patricia, said, for the first time ever, I had the pleasure to participate in a conference that is fully accessible to me. It had live subtitles. I have attended a countless number of conferences and lectures in my life, often as a speaker. However, they looked like this. I would say what I had to say, and then I would feel bored for the rest of the event. I hope that from now on I will be able to participate in more events with live subtitles. In this module, we offer you a number of videos, including a video with more contributions from the users. This will help you understand the user's perspective on event accessibility. Live subtitles can also be used in educational settings. They facilitate the communication during lectures, classes or seminars. What are the benefits of using live subtitles in education? The student is not only provided with notes, but also with enhanced access that gives him or her more opportunities to participate in the class. In addition, the end result is a full transcript of the lecture that you can use later when you're studying for an exam. Depending on the scenario, the live subtitling service may have different names. It might be called live subtitling or real-time captioning or live captioning it might also be referred to as live speech-to-text transcription, or, especially in the United States, it might be called CART. Another possible name 
is real-time stenography. Although for the user, all these are really synonymous, as it's the same service delivering the same value, from the perspective of the provider, these services may differ a bit in the technical and organizational details of how they are provided. Now, let us take a closer look at the differences between subtitles for live events and those for television. During live events, there is a somewhat more tolerant attitude to errors. On television, broadcasters can feed the audio from the studio a bit earlier to the re-speakers. They can introduce the so-called antenna delay to delay TV signal, and that might even allow for subtitles to have no delay at all. This is impossible in live events. The re-speaker always hears the speaker at the very same moment as the audience, and live subtitling will always have some delay in live events. This might not be that big of a problem though, because the subtitles are also displayed differently. Actually, they might not look like subtitles at all. They might even be shown on a big screen with as many lines of text as six or so many lines of text as six or seven, and in such case the delay will not be as problematic, as you will see more of the text and it will not disappear as quickly as on TV. Speakers are sometimes identified in different ways in live events. And, last but not least, working conditions of live subtitlers might be completely different on TV and in live event settings. As of now, there's no international standard for live subtitling in live events. International Telecommunications Union, or ITU, put together a technical paper. After watching this video lecture, you will have a chance to review this ITU document, as well as other guidelines. Case in point, and an apt illustration of the lack of common standards, is speaker identification. It differs between television and live events, as well as between countries. On television, speakers are usually identified with a color or with a name tag, whereas during live events, especially during debates, we may not be sure who is talking. Thus, the key is to indicate turn taking. To give you a further example, chevrons are often used to indicate speakers taking turns on TV in the United States. They are not used on TV in Poland, but they are used in Poland in live events. Here you can see examples of chevrons being used to show speakers taking turns. Speakers are not identified with their name, but you can see where the utterances of one speaker finish and when a new speaker starts speaking. In educational settings, standards can be different altogether. They can be much lower, just as technical requirements to provide the service. This is partly because of a much smaller audience, for instance, just one hard of hearing student at a lecture and also because of different needs. There might be no life correction in some cases. The user, that is the student, can correct the transcription, or a fellow hearing student can do that. It might be enough to have a laptop with a speech recognition software. Subtitles can be shown on this very laptop, or on the user's devices such as a tablet or a smartphone. Let's now talk about quality. Quality is very important if you want your subtitles to be of value to users. There's no point in providing what we call pretended accessibility. For instance, low quality subtitles, which are of little value to the users. How can we improve the quality of live subtitles? Let's discuss in detail the factors that influence the quality of live subtitles. First, we have the skills of a re-speaker and an editor. These include, among others, multitasking, improved working memory, ability to dictate text divided into phrases, clear pronunciation, the ability to rephrase the text, make it clearer, simpler or shorter, depending on the situation. Live editors or moderators also need to be able to touch type so that they don't have to shift their gaze between the keyboard and the text they're correcting. 
they need to type fast and be able to read the text and navigate through it very quickly. The work of re-speakers and editors does not start with the beginning of the live event. It's very important that they have time and resources to prepare for the event in advance. For instance, by reading through reference materials such as the agenda, speaker bio notes or presentations, and familiarizing themselves with the terminology and proper names. They also need to work on the lexicon or dictionary of the speech recognition software adding the relevant names and terminology and making sure that software will be able to recognize these accurately. During the event, working conditions of re-speakers and moderators need to be prioritized. Good working conditions include proper sound insulation, properly lit and ventilated room or an interpreting booth, excellent sound, view of the event, especially view of the speakers and their presentations. For longer events, re-speakers or editors cannot work alone. Similarly to interpreters, they should be working in pairs so that they can take breaks after no more than 30 minutes. However, the quality of the end product does not depend solely on the performance of re-speakers and editors during the event. Quality will also depend on the speech recognition software we use, its lexicon size and ability to adapt. Also, the quality of the software used to display subtitles or correct them. High quality computers and microphones, as well as fast broadband internet connection, also need to be guaranteed. The speech rate of the speaker is also important. When speakers talk very fast, for instance, faster than 180 words per minute, it becomes much harder to provide good quality subtitles. Finally, subtitles should be displayed in a way that is in line with users' preferences. So, let's now say a few words on how to display subtitles. Again, we have several options here. We can use a second screen to show subtitles, or we can show them on the main screen, together with the presentation, at the bottom of the presentation, or at the top. Subtitles can also be sent to mobile devices. This can happen through a receiver, a sort of a dongle that you attach to your device. Or subtitles may be accessed directly via a web page or through an app. Here you can find some examples. Whether we show subtitles above or below the presentation, it is important that they don't cover the contents of the presentation. However, many users prefer a setup in which subtitles are shown on a separate large screen. In such a scenario, it is possible to show more than two lines of text at the same time. It is also possible to show subtitles in an app. In this picture, you can see an app developed by Verba Voice. One of the advantages in this scenario is that users can customize the font, size and color of the text. Subtitles can look differently for each user. Giving users the choice is always the best possible option, but might not always be possible. The future of live subtitling might not involve screens at all, as it's possible to display subtitles with the use of special glasses. Subtitle glasses might give more power to the users. They might also help making live subtitling more easily available. Only people who need and want to see subtitles will see them. Regardless of the language we work in and whether the subtitles are displayed online or on site of a live event, we should always use legible sans serif typefaces and high contrast. Remember that the most important thing is for live subtitles to be of value to the users. That's all from me in this video. Thank you for watching.